be someone's mouse or monitor or something like that. But regardless, um, yeah, we're going to get into the game real soon here. It is a best of three, and it's the first game of the day, so there's going to be a lot more coming up. We've got uh, Brazil versus Brazil later on in the evening. I think that is going to be fantastic. But for now, it's going to be Astralis versus G2 in a best of three here at Blast Premier. So let's get the show on the road. Astralis going to be starting on the T side, G2 on the CT side. And... Um, I missed out on the Kovac party yesterday, but I, I, I didn't want to miss it today, so I went for G2. I really didn't know what it was going to be, but I just thought, you know what? I just I don't want to miss out one more time. I think that's all I was feeling. Dude, uh, they crashed the club yesterday. It wasn't much of a party. It was True. a bit of a blowout. They just showed up, you know, poured all the booze on the floor, said screw you, and bounced out the door. 2-0 uh, clean win over FURIA. And so we'll be seeing FURIA later against MIBR. That's yes. going to be so good. I have got my stage on period on that one. But now, G2 versus Astralis. You and I have both predicted Astralis on this one, Anders. A lot riding on this. Oh, did we pick it? I picked Astralis. I forgot. I thought I picked G2. I should have picked G2, but it's too late to change you now. Know. Oh, man. Here we go. Amanek all the way in the back. They've got so many people lining up for this bomb site. I think Astralis are taking such a slow approach and getting slowed down that this is a nightmare for the Danes. Did he just get stuck in the car? I need a replay of that alone. I have no idea what just happened, apart from the fact, obviously, that the Danes got absolutely slaughtered in the B-bomb site. I'm not sure what slowed them down, but whatever it was, that that is definitely what killed them in this one. Holy smokes, that hard counter coming in from G2, though. That could not have gone any better for G2. Three players, four players on the site so early on into that. The anti-flashes just halting Astralis in their tracks. Astralis were really hoping to just get that rush down hard, but they all ate a flash and were just... That just pretty much spelled their demise. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Mm. If you get flash running that B tunnel, that is not a good reason to stop. Well, we must keep going. You know, us amateurs, Anders. Yes, we would hold W and keep going, right? But the pros have their reasons. I don't know. <laughs> I've you, listen. If, I mean, let's not compare the level of counter shot that we play at. But I just, <laughs> all, all I'm just saying is that when people stop in that B tunnel, that is one of the worst things that people could do to me, and I will instantly yeah. unfriend you if, you if that happens in the game. I just I cannot deal with it. All right, here we go. MP5 up against a bunch of unarmored targets. The grenade's going to be a little bit late. That grenade is on time, but it's, it's not the right one. And Nico does go down. It's just Glocks here, and if they get a bomb plant, I mean, they, that's already so worth it. And another kill. They're never going to win this round, but two kills and a bomb plant for having nothing but Glocks. What a win for Astralis. Monster round. I actually managed to make it up there. Kenny fluffing that HE. That was really unfortunate. That would have done tremendous damage. Instead, it is uh, it lands in his face. So uh, that probably is what made the difference there. That gave Astralis just enough of a gap yeah. to get onto the site, swamp it, and get that plant. And then you're, you're right for pointing it out. The whole point of that round, hard ego, just get on there, get that bonus 800 for everybody across the board so that you can get a round like this. Look at this buy that's coming in from Astralis now. Even going so far as a glass cannon AWP on device. It is dust too. We do expect to see ops in play. Yeah, getting this early though. I mean, all third round. Their buy right now is completely outclassing what G2 have. Ooh. Hunter getting tagged through the mid doors by device. Might have even been a surprise to G2 that that orb was there. They're like, oh wait, what? Yeah. I bet you they were all they were just expecting AKs, right? There will be some quick plays coming in from Astralis, left full nades, and it is quick. Minute 35, we've already got a push going through. Kenny gonna get one through the smoke. That's Dupree already down, but now it's all on Amanek. Has to hold the line solo here on the B site. Will take Zipnix and drop Slave down to 2 HP, but now Astralis, they've got three alive, and they're gonna be getting that bomb planted. I think it's remarkable that G2 are even in a three-on-three -three right now. I, they were in no position whatsoever to hold that B-split. They were actually at almost the worst possible setup to deal with that kind of situation. If not for the kills for the smoke by Kenny, this isn't even mm -hmm. close to a round. But um, it still might be very tricky. Again, we always mention it, but retaking the B-bomb site, even at uh, you know even numbers, is just not that much fun. Oh, and they line up. <laughs> I don't know. That's ridiculous. Well, Anders, you were very correct, and uh, <laughs> you were correct, and just, yeah, lining up, that's actually the worst case scenario. That was, uh, uh, it's like Tetris, wasn't it? Listen, I really love to see that out of Astralis, that aggression. Yes. Minute 36, and they're already pushing through mid doors. They've got a full-on split going. That's fast. And so they're just letting, they're, they just let G2 drop that guard for an instant. They're putting G2 on notice. Device got that tag early, and then just very quick, putting the pressure on. It's going to be, I, I feel like we're going to have a really exciting match just off of these first three rounds here, dude. This is awesome. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, there's still a, uh, so much on the line, right? Astralis getting the old team back together again and, and you know, figuring out how that feels. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Nico and Hunter are all of a sudden on the same team and, and the way that they were looking in that last game yesterday, the two maps that we saw, it was real impressive. So I'm sure there'll be much more of that. So it's always that infamous honeymoon phase that everyone exactly. was talking about. And in Astralis' case, is, in case, you know, it's comfortable. But will it ever be the same? Andrew? They were they were divorced, but now they're <laughs> will, it ever, will it ever be the same? Will they ever be able to reignite that flame again, or is it just going to be doing it, you know, for the kids? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like that. That's a good question, and I guess we'll find out um, if it will work or not. If nothing else, do it for the investors. Um, <laughs> you, you to, well, we we saw what happens to device. <laughs> it's too rough, isn't it? Um, over on this CT side right now. Uh, no reason to, to get divorced at all at the moment, because none of them have any cash to read. Like, there's not going to be any spreading it around. It's not really worth it at, the, at this point in time. Device down at the pit alone with the orb. He has to actually keep this alive. He's, he's getting some backup now once again. Apart from the fact that they didn't really have any pistols, this is one of my favorite strategies on Dust 2. So just, you know, if you're new to the game or if you haven't seen it, because it does get used incredibly rarely for probably good reasons. Mm -hmm. But you can sometimes, if you take long on the T side, you put the AWP player in pit, and then you go back and you make noise across the rest of the map. Eventually, the CT side will feel like, well, there's no one long. Like, well, you know, they haven't been there for a long time. I'm just going to go check, and then you check right into the AWP and die. And I just, you know, I, I, I really like that idea. I think it's so cool. Um, does obviously come with a bunch of different risks. I mean, amongst other things, you can end up wasting most of your time doing this, right? And if you take long and you lose a bunch of people. But anyway, I just think it's, when it works, I really think it's satisfying. It does. You know what else is satisfying? Uh, having Device and Kenny both with ops. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is what we've been waiting for, dude. Full buy. Essentially, Nico is going to have to skimp a little bit and go for that UMP next to with the FAMAS. But now we've got that AWP in play on Kenny. And this is going to be at the big buy round. What do Astralis have for us now? H oh, just lands barely short. Amanek should have eaten that nade. So close. That's so unfortunate. Yeah. He needed, uh, needed a little bit more trigonometry uh, or something like that. Man. Calculate just the full angle. Weak throwing arm. Didn't yeah. play baseball growing up. Oh, the catch with your dad? Throwing it, throwing it out back. Pigs we don't have baseball in Denmark. We don't know what that is. It's true. You guys aren't big fan of throwing things. Not You're, unless you know it's kicking things. That's that's what you guys are all about. Kicking, yeah. Maybe if it's axes or something, we can get into it. That's fine. Axes. Axe throwing is amazing. Yeah. Should should be a sport. Yeah, like but, a full on. Uh, sure, Anders, but it's not like something that every kid does growing up. You know, it's like. <laughs> I did all the time. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, you were just uh, you were just you know really tapping into those Viking roots, something like that. Ooh, Thirty-five seconds. That's a very very good time to be doing that exact counterplay from G2. That's very smart. It's super late in the round, so Astralis now they have to change their minds. But this doesn't feel like you know a natural change. It's more like an oh damn, we just got caught and there's almost no time left. Let's go and look at this other counter. They've set up Hunter in case it was another B split. Great thinking coming out from G2. This is what you like to see. Just one step step ahead of Astralis in this entire round. That was all so well lined up. That is lethal. He really did live up to his name there as well. Impeccable stuff from Hunter. He lets him walk right into the trap and just, you know, really commit. Yes. No backing out at that point when they're just getting sprayed down. You can see here, just lets a few of them walk out at the same time, gives himself multiple targets. You may think this is greedy, but that angle, sure. unless you're ready for it, you can see the frustration from Dupree. They know he that was they should in, be checking that. Like he was up in one of those hunting towers they built as well. There you go, yeah. yeah just smoke, sitting there. Smoke Tamascus scent. Like, they, did, they never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously yeah. not a hunter. <laughs> um, oh, nice shot, though, device. <clears throat> yeah. Next uh, was uh, partly flashed, couldn't really see much, so... Oh, get out of here! It looked like Kenny would have seen that. I'd love to see that without the x-ray. I, I wonder how visible he was, because obviously with the x-ray, yeah. it looks so much easier, uh, it could be a little bit uh, deceptive. Still, sixth round, and it's a five on three, and this is a round that Astralis, I mean, you know, the full 100% version of Astralis will never lose a round like this. And well, they're doing a pretty remarkable job in this round. And that's good to see because that's the kind of Astralis we would all really like to see uh, when, they're, when they're all the way on top. Five versus threes, you know, th those around you win, you know, 85% more of the time probably. What even are these kills? 
Device catches Nexa with a flash. And then he barely squeaks Kenny through the smoke on the edge of the smoke. And then you get the lurk smoke on B, and they barely get the kill there, too. That was a very, very close round from Astralis. You can see Device, all right, from his perspective. Oh, wow, clear as day from Device's side. It looked like it was definitely a little bit harder to make out there on Kenny's. Probably was, yeah, probably was. Wow, that, but that is such an insane difference, because from Kenny's perspective, we could barely see Device. Yeah, Device clearly could see him, like, clear as day. Yeah, huh. That's... that's... That, that is one of the dangerous things in the game sometimes. Couple of people up a catwalk. I don't know, just running in one at a time and getting slaughtered by Nexa. He's just three kills with a USP. That should never happen, and that should be a strong reminder to Astralis. You know, that is completely careless and frankly indefensible. Uh, uh, well, let's, 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 let's pump the brakes just a second there. You know, he was backed up. Uh, he had a little bit of firepower there to help him out, didn't he? No, but I mean, just a USP. No, but it doesn't really matter. Like, I, I don't care if they all had, you know, uh, Negev's up there. It's, I, it's, it's more about how they turn that corner, right? Like, um, that's, that's just, there's no excusing that. that you're that, right. That can never happen. Did they go in dry? I didn't notice. I thought I heard a flash go off, but it, clearly they weren't flashed. I was going to say, they definitely weren't flashed. And, and it, 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 I mean, even then, you know, like, do you just want to run in one at a time around the corner? It, I, the whole thing just seemed very confusing. Yeah, but, you know, that's the thing, Anders, now. You make, you just let your, you get a little sloppy for an instant, and that'll come back to bite you. And if this bomb gets caught out here on Catwalk, this is just timing everything. Oh my god, Nexus got to pick up an AWP. Oh, and he gets around the corner. Yes. Does Zipnix manage to walk his way up Catwalk? Now this is getting really silly. Do we, we have a smoke from Zipnix as well. He can block off Cat behind him. Yeah, they're being very slow about it, and, and obviously they don't want to give away exactly where they are. And you can tell that the result is G2 are looking everywhere. Spotted him, Zip. Yeah, he's ready and waiting, but can't get the kill. Hunter will take him down. So many uh, issues in this round for Astralis, quite frankly. And the Molotov on top of the bomb, because why not? Device now fighting them. Ten seconds left. He might as well almost just go straight for it, but he's going to be running, and they'll catch him in the meantime. Uh, one round for G2, and uh, I mean, that's, I've got very many bad things to say about what just happened in this round for Astralis. But okay. It's I'll, a freebie. Listen, I'll leave, I'll leave some of them for the, for the analyst as well. Just we just got the replay there. Unfortunately, I was looking at the eco from Astralis. I didn't see whether that flash went down or not. Whatever. Point being is, that's one of those rounds that Astralis obviously wish they could have back. Eco round, sort of anti-eco losses are always painful, especially against pretty much hard egos like that. No takesy backsies. No takesy backsies. <clears throat> Flash though, device expecting it. He had that angle pre-aimed, but oh. Kenny now going into the upper dark. The drop is there. No debris been spotted, and Kenny, of course, is going to hit that shot. No fear. They actually had people pushing in from uh, from the V-bomb side, but now they've left Kenny alone. They're back in, and Amanek just in the last second to help him out. I love this. The, the CT aggression, we, we've mentioned it in previous games, that it's much, much harder to do on the CT side than people sometimes recognize. There are a bunch of other maps where you could be way more liberal with your aggression on the CT side than you can on Dust2. And G2 just going above and beyond and showing us how that can work. Nico, I can't believe it. He's so blind and he still zip crouches right into it. G2 looking absolutely dialed up for this game and they are gonna lose nobody in this round. This is rad. Give me dialed up, full on aggressive, opping Kenny S straight into my veins every day, please. We love to see it, don't we? I, I'll take this every day. I can watch that kind of Kenny play all the time, forever. So good. And that's all confidence. That's all just him being like, right, time to make the play. And I am going to be faster. I'm going to be better. You know, device managed to get me through the smoke, pull that rat play. Yeah. You know? And just, uh, well, what's also, I think, what makes that way more frustrating for Astralis is that they gave them the previous round. Yeah. So, you know, if, you, if you're Astralis, the first, the first thing you're going to be thinking in losing that uh, ridiculous round to Nexa is, okay, it's fine, we still have money, we'll win it back. Like, we'll, we'll take that right back, it's, you know, and then when you don't do that and you actually just get completely wrecked in the following round, that's kind of hard to deal with. Grenade and device. We'll make it up for all of a second. Nico with a nice ace. It's all against Glocks, but it doesn't matter. You do not want to get this guy fired up, do you? Those are the feel-good frags. Nico, he's going to thrive in this sort of scenario. Kenny helping out as well, of course, with a few of the body shots on those guys. And there you have it. G2 extending that lead 6-3. to three, Looking very comfortable on this CT side right now. I mean, Astralis' rounds have essentially been just skin-of-the-teeth sort of scenario. Uh, 
the first one. The other two actually look pretty good for us, Joel. So this is interesting. I mean, I've, I... They look like they've come in with a pretty good game plan right now, but G2 have a lot of different tricks up their sleeves to throw Astralis off course, right? There was Kenny pushing into Lower Dark. There was the, part, the point in time when they flashed their way into Catwalk at 35 seconds and pushed Astralis back out the middle and Hunter was set up for the B-Split. Those are just signs of a lot of preparation on the side of G2, and, uh, and that's what you need to get put together good, successful CT sides. And, and it's, it's actually just a lot of hard work. I think people sometimes underestimate how much goes into successfully having, or having successful CT sides in general. Because a lot of the focus ends up being on the T side and like strategies and smokes and where they land. But um, yeah, I think that's a it's an slightly underexposed part of the game. Dupree's taking a grenade. Default setup more or less here for G2. It's a kind of setup where you're basically saying, let's just hope Kenny gets a kill if they go catwalk. And then we can retake four and five, probably. If he gets two kills, mm -hmm. probably round is already won. Ish. Kenny is certainly capable as well. It's a position that he should excel in. Absolutely. Smoke going down to try and create a little bit more room for Astralis to work with here. As they begin their push onto the A site, Kenny rotating around, looking to find a shot. The smoke is there, but he's got a gap. Hits it. Maze is out. Man advantage now for G2 going into this retake with 20 seconds left. Astralis are going to get that bomb planted. Long rotation is going to have to happen here for Emenek, but the rest of them are already on site. They have two Molotovs, and Astralis are probably going to be pushed back towards the catwalk, so those two Molotovs are going to be massive. This is all really well thought out. Astralis don't have that much. In fact, they just used their last smoke, so one Molotov goes onto the site itself, and Glaive, oh, he actually gets tagged, and there's the Molotov, Nexa, and Nico joining in. It's a big double kill for Nexa right here. And what is Sip meant to do? One versus five. I guess just get tapped out almost immediately. Nexa on point with every kind of tool here in the book. Nice triple for him. Nice retake out of G2. That was all so planned out. I don't think they were worried at all in that round. They're looking clean right now, yep. G2. Nico slotting into this perfectly. Him and Nexa top fragging, 11 frags each, just looking really good. And they're playing with some confidence. So seven to three, G2, and there it is. Astralis, okay, they're gonna be taking care of their, taking advantage of their time. Waiting for that full 20 second buy and then going for the tactical oh, timeout. Well, they're using the buy time, right? To right, right, yeah. Maximize the, the tactical timeout that they're taking right now. Malek, the uh, G2 coach on your screen now. A man who really does believe in systems and playing by the numbers. He's actually a unique coach in CSGO. Haven't heard of his um, his strategy before from any of the other coaches. It really just, he's awesome. Talked a little bit about it a little bit in interviews in terms of how he wants to break things down by percentage, but. Uh, it's a very cool, very cool approach. I'm curious if he's still sticking with it. It's been a while since we've obviously gotten to talk, seeing as how sure, yeah. Corona shut down the land circuit. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know what? Right now, at least, the uh, G2 are looking like uh, a strong team. So um, we'll see if it's going to continue that way. I mean, it's still still hard to judge. Yeah, half by coming in from Astral, I think that makes a lot of sense. The bomb plant, I mean, they could have all bought armor and AK and then nothing else. So they would have had a zero grenades pretty much across the board. And as much fun as that could be in a matchmaking game, it's not that great in, a, in an actual professional game. Lining up for Nico, he's already had one ace. Don't give him more. I just don't think that's necessary. Well, it won't be this time because Kenny's taken one of them there. And Glaive does not have the bomb. Would have been a nice little tricky thing. He'll get the quad anyway, so certainly adding to the stats. Nico, the Eco Cobra! Yeah, nine out of the 15 kills that he has so far are, are just from, you know, yeah. losing the, lose the armor target. Right? Just, uh, you know, listen, they, they wanted to ease him in, and there's, they, they're giving him all the feel-good frags. You know, let's get in there, Nico. Come on. Get after him, Tiger. <laughs> Whatever. It's all good, right? It all just helps in the end, doesn't it? You're just going to be feeling good about it. Eight to three, 12th round. And um, Astralis back with some money, but now, I think now the test really is, what I'm looking for here is, Astralis must be realizing at this point in time that this is a really well prepared team on the on the CT side, and I want to see if they can break that somehow. What if they got to show us that is, uh, that's going to be catching G2 off guard? 
The retake on A again was beautiful. The way they stopped the B split, the way they were aggressive in lower dark. I just, uh, I mean, those critical rounds are the ones where Astralis have had weapons, and all the rest of it they've been fighting against a really, you know, a really poor version of Astralis, which is fine. Like if G2 can pull those rounds every time Astralis have a buy, like in this one, mm. that's great. You're you're gonna get a free round right afterwards just for making that effort. So. That's working out really well. And again, this time it's a, a three-man stack over at B, which is not that common. It's it's a little bit unusual for the CT side. Uh, does leave mid wide open, but we'll see if uh, if they're going to be exploiting that in any way, Astralis, if they even know. And um, again, similar situation where Kenny's out long. He's kind of low on health this time. So we'll see if they can, if he can snag in that kill to make the retake easier. It looks like it's almost a repeat here for Astralis. I like that lineup. Yeah. Those are always very cool. It sets it up so that um, that smoke goes down perfectly there, Device. And it's looking like Astralis are going to be able to work their way out onto this A site. The rotation is coming through from G2. They will have plenty of time there as the bomb is only just now getting planted. Look at the difference all this time. Magus is actually holding the catwalk, so that, that's going to give them 100% confirmation that no one's coming cat, so they know it's going to be long and CT spawn for the retake, and that's already good information. Magus also has a Molotov, and now he's actually going to go out long to try and see if he can stop this, and timing is everything for this push for Magus. Glaive goes down, next and next in line, traded, now it's Dupree, and coming up from long, it's a bit of a no-scope, oh, and he gets a follow-up, back-to-back, no-scopes from Device, and leaving Nico in a one versus two, and I don't know how he's going to be winning this he's caught just as he's jumping a very very close round here for astralis but they do find a way to pull it through oh and they cannot save an op anders that was so close just not quite able to give one over to device nico is nico calling he's talking a lot anders i don't know if we don't know yet do we he's talking I mean, a lot there's a lot of hand there. motion there you know like he was trying to make a point listen even if he's not calling right i'm sure he's he's not going to be you know not gonna be staying quiet, not gonna stay out of the conversation. Uh huh. Just as long as there's like a, a line of command, right? I'm just waiting for the Shoxy moment where he just flips over, you know? He's like, oh yes, no, I am, I am, I am just here to kill. Ha <laughs> ha. And then <laughs> the three rounds in, like, okay, this is what we're doing, guys. Get me back into it. Yeah, I hope, hope he'll resist. I want him to resist that, uh, that urge. Just because. I'm very curious to see if he's capable of it. It's gonna be fun. I mean, this is, it's really gonna be exciting to watch this G2 progression now. But uh, Astralis, that was a critical round for Astralis, of course. Obviously, uh, this first half was going against them. It's 8-4 to four right now in favor of G2 on CT. And so, uh, Astralis really do need to pick up the remaining three rounds. And, oh whoa, through the smoke, Magus is going to get lucky and take down Emanek. That's big. Uh, hardly seems fair, does it? It's, I mean, it's about time, right? That, that duel has been going on for freaking 13 rounds. Yeah. So, uh, on the 13th round, unlucky for Emanek. Exit down in the pit. Oh, he needs some backup now. It's a great job taking down Magus, pushing aggressively, and they didn't really check that too hard. There was also a little bit of a help from Flashbang. I think next they're going to go straight for it, and he nearly spins to take down Sip. So incredible recovery here for G2. I actually thought they were in a in a tough position. There, I mean, there were so many little cool details. I actually would love to watch. A, I would love to see how well that Flashbang lands from Kenny to help out Nexa in the pit, but also. Once they're four and five, they don't just sit around and wait and say, oh, let's, let's see what happens. They go and find the, you know, the kill on Magus down in lower dark. And that is a huge problem for Astralis in a bunch of different ways. Oh, he only just jumped up. <laughs> I need to see that. Dude. Maybe it didn't look like that from Nico's point of view, but from Glaive's point of view, he must have been thinking, what is happening? I was, I was diving into the trenches there and somehow still died. Nine to four. Dude, that's gross. <laughs> He's such a monster. This is why I really don't want Nico calling. I, I like. Yeah, we've been cheated out of having this version of Nico for way too long. By Nico himself, unfortunately. But it's, I still, I don't care. I just want him to return to this. Unbelievable. It's, really, it's just weird having this camera angle on Nico because I always just think of Super Seedum. You know, it's like cold sliding around the corner. Kyoto. <laughs> But that was a bit of a moment there, you know? Look at this. Look at this flick. What? Wait, but he wasn't even on the screen anymore. I don't think we need to hands. enhance. Yeah, get listen. What is going on? <clears throat> Did Glaive just get CS code? I think he got Nico, didn't he? Alright, well get out. Yeah, get out of town. 
full buy coming in from G2, half buy from Astralis. Quite a few nades actually with the pistol and Kevlar from Astralis. So they've got options. They've invested a bit. And well, G2, I mean, full buy with double AUG on top of the AWP from Kenny. So they've got uh, some versatility as well on their side. So I'm very curious to see here as G2 just go for a default 2 1 2 setup. Nico playing from CT, just holding mid. I mean, test oh. for G. Oh, it would have been nice if you could have pulled the trigger right then. Not gonna get caught by the flash at all. Seems like he's handling this very well. But yeah, I mean, just like Astralis did screw up one of their rounds earlier to to Tony Pistols, it's obviously important that G two don't, you know, themselves fall to this kind of a round, and they're handling it fine. So, yeesh, no real issue. But note, I mean, it's a small, really a small point to bring up. But notice how none of them are. You know, hunting for frags. They weren't taking crazy wild duels in the middle. They weren't doing anything like that. They were saying, fine, whatever, you know. We'll fall back. We'll play it safe. We'll make sure that we can get these uh, these kills before we even begin to really uh, lean into the round a little bit more. 15th round coming up. So impressive with how confident right now G2 are. They're all just taking duels and hitting shots. No, doesn't feel like they're worried at all about Astralis. In fact, it's Astralis. When you see them on the cams that are the ones, they're kind of... You know, shaking their heads, a lot of frowning. I mean, this is going to be the big play coming in from Astralis, trying to force this, uh, for, trying to force G2 onto their back foot, and it's just not happening. Amanek holds the line on this B site. Astralis, they're getting whittled down. as divine. Well, it's Dupree left, and not for long. Whoa, what a last round! Just this, brutal. Look, they end the half with Dupree this time around. It's going to have to be more than that. They have just got utterly stomped by G2 in the first half. And not just, I mean, yeah, Nico at 23 kills and, and 7 deaths. That's amazing. But that, I mean, you might think, well, that's it. That you know, just Nico going ham. No, it wasn't. It was really good preparation. Uh, don't let that, that one guy just fool you into it. Although it's great fun watching him play at this level. Mm. Um, that is not what did this. This is G2 being very well prepared for the CT side. And I hope they will be on the T side too. Because this is great fun to watch. Astralis definitely waking up a little bit late for this. So far at least. You're pointing out three of them only have three kills. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's actually... It's flew under the radar for, yeah. for a while there. I wasn't I really notice. paying attention to the kills. I was kind of paying attention to the money more than anything, just because that's the important thing. But like three, three and three on Dupree, Zipnix, and Glaive, just completely absent. Small wonder that Astralis are struggling if those guys can't hit anything right now. So G2, I mean, if this persists, I see G2 just stomping their way through this first math, map and things getting real complicated for Astralis going into Nuke. And I forgot what my prediction was. I did pick Astralis. I thought I'd pick Yeah, you picked Astralis. So now it's even worse for me. I've, I've, Listen, this is where you're just, uh, you know. I've cheated myself somehow. That is next level, though. <laughs> um, not getting caught by the flash in the middle. So that's important for Glaive, obviously. Not uh, not to run away from that. Or not to run right into that. Two HEs on Sip and Glaive made me think that they have some sort of plan for uh, for, for explode. Oh, actually, he's on the, on the other side. I thought maybe they'd try and blow up a, a bomb plant on either bomb site if you save them. But it looks like Sip is just ready in case there's some sort of confirmation. What are you doing if you're Bubsky in this situation? Tag me in. <laughs> yeah. Put me in, coach. Put me in. Sonic, please. Oh. Please. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? Who knows? Maybe, maybe you're just happy you're not in right now for what's, you know, being handled here. What, uh, what they're, what they're doing on the G2 side. Over at long device, some smoke coming up. They're going to be jumping down through, and yeah, CT spawn smoked off. Glaive trying to guess. That's a smart decision here for device to fall this far back and. No one really going down. Would have been great with a headshot here for the Danish side, but they haven't really managed to land it. And now they're going to be falling back. And in a pistol round, you can be more than uh, more than sure that they're not going to have a Molotov on that catwalk. They are going to have the double nade, and that double HG could still be really interesting. Just hold on and see what that actually brings. Or oh, maybe nothing. The plank coming in, and there's a second one as well. That's Kenny S dropping him. It's all on device, and not for long. Nico continues his reign of terror. Two kills at the end for him. Puts him up at 25 kills. And, well, <laughs> entirely possible at this rate that he just picks up a nice clean 30 bomb against Astralis to kick off the series and uh, to make his presence felt. It did look uh, like a fairly one-sided affair for G2 versus Furia yesterday. And, well, it looks like they're not interested in letting that uh, slow down any. Although, it is worth mentioning that Astralis, and this was pointed out by the desk. Thank you, all, you know, thank you obviously, to our wonderful analyst, uh, Pimpin Maniac. But... Um, Astralis, you know, this is not a good map for them. 
they, they, they recently they've struggled quite a bit on it. Sure. This yeah. is the, the the return of the Golden Five, right? But uh, it is still not a map where we should be expecting the most from Astralis, and it probably would have been shocking to see them really uh, beating up on G2 here. Uh, that being said, I mean, it is still G2 just running game on Astralis. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think that's that's definitely reasonable to take that into consideration when you're when you're watching this. G2, the, again, I would say, with a strong game plan in that pistol round. Taking catwalk, fair play, you get the bomb down eventually, that also is pretty standard. But then actually interrupting the retake by pushing out middle and flanking them, I mean, that's just a, little, a nice little twist to the whole thing. Sometimes people do just go catwalk and say, let's just all group up here and wait and see what happens, and, you know, we'll, we'll stop them from defusing, but... This is the whole thing, it was just being proactive. Yeah. Instead of waiting for them to push in, just taking the fight to them. Don't even let them get started. I like it. You're well. You've got the race car in CT right now with that scoot. Device kind of zipping around. Oh, thought he hit that. Not quite. I don't even know what level of comeback we're talking about here from Astralis. They just don't seem like they're really in this map right now. Maybe that's what they need to accomplish is to get people walk. Like, you know what? This is probably not going to be our map, but let's... Um Let's not go into the second map with three of our three out of five members essentially not really feeling that good about it. Got all the SMGs pretty much here on G2, although uh, we are going to get G and the Eco, another Eco frag. Man, talk about cutting it close. Six seconds and the bomb gets planted. That HE, had it caught the wrong guy, could have been real nasty. Instead, yeah. Amanek holding top mid right now. Zip makes last man alive with the Deagle Kevlar. It's yeah. probably not necessary to, to run the clock down that low. Yeah, that was uh, just a little awkward. Man, I'm going to get rewarded for his uh, stealthiness there. Camped up top, picks up another kill. <laughs> He's got 27 and 7. And it, the two highest fraggers on Astralis are Device and Magus get 11 kills each. So. Yeah. No, Nico's a, Nico's a savage. It's, it's pretty wild. And after that round now for Astralis, it's another... Uh, round of eco coming in here for the Danes should give G2 a 10 round lead <laughs> going into the first buy round for Astralis on the GT side. Oh, there's the HE and Dupree down to half HP already. Unfortunately for him, he's gonna have to back off. And Astralis losing control of long means they can get those AKs into play if they want, take advantage of that range. This is the kind of round that, well, nearly the kind of round that G2. Ended up winning on the on the CT side because Australia stumbled into to catwalk. Not really seeing G2 put on the same kind of thing, are we? They're, they're being pretty measured about it. Even if that had been like a triple nade out long, it would have just been a hunter blown up essentially, right? Like it wouldn't have been the whole G2 team. So, yeah, really careful. Really, uh, I guess from like a action viewership point of view, maybe you think, ah oh, man, why aren't they just finishing this round? It's easy, but but. From a playing reasonable Counter-Strike point of view, this is great. Dude, nothing goes right for them. This is brutal. Uh, unfortunately for Nico, he's not going to find another one. Still two kills. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Uh, it, 30 bomb. He's got two rounds now. He's definitely getting another one. This, I mean, I'd, certainly for uh, for the fall season here at Blast Premier, this, this has got to be a... Uh, like a... close to some sort of record in terms of, of one map and just what he's been doing here. I don't know who's keeping an eye on that, but I'm sure someone is, so... Yeah, Dupree's little head shake there kind of says it all, doesn't it? Makes it? Sometimes you're just feeling like you're getting beat up and there's not a whole lot you can do. I'm pretty sure Astralis right now are feeling a bit helpless. Well, now, I mean, they, aren't, they don't even upgrade G2. They still just go with two AKs and three SMGs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have the money to, to buy in the next round anyway, so I think for damage, like a bonus, right? Saying it's fine. If we if we end up losing it, just go for a nice buy. Decent attempt at a grenade. It will do some damage to Hunter. That's definitely helpful. Device out here. It's a pretty good flick to take down Nexa. And he's going to do very similarly to what was Kenny was doing. Fall back. Go for the retake. And I think that's still a good idea. Now, sit in the middle. will take down Amanek, who is trying to, you know, play spoiler down the middle and stop them from rotating in. This is going to be very hard now for G2 to hold this, even with the two AKs here. It's a good grenade, but it's also three on five, and the flashes are coming in. Kenny will get the kill on Sip, and he's going to have to stand really tall here. Yeah, Nico is there to try to help out. I got your back, dude. I was wondering where that flash was going to come through, and unfortunately, uh, yeah, sure, it flashed Kenny, but it also flashed his teammate. 
Strong retake. A good job on Astralis. We've been saying ban things for about them for, I don't know, 20 minutes in a row. Um, but this was good, so credit where it is due. That's the kind of stuff they need much more of. Well, you know, that's the thing. They just wanted to give Nico more opportunities to get 30, uh, to get the 30 ball manners. Oh, there he is. He's already good. He's already there. I mean, he's like, I don't think anything can stop that from happening. It's meant to be, isn't it? 20th round. Yeah, and there's the bike. I mean, even after this, they have a lot of money on the G2 side. Nice shot from Kenny to drop Glaive. Smoke going over the corner. Maybe Astralis read that as, okay, they're just going to smoke it off and, and maybe there won't be that orb on the other side immediately. I mean, that smoke that the T's throw to that corner over that long is it's so common. Any number of rounds. Well, we've all heard the magic stick ring out before. Glad to see that you still got that one. Oh, well, Kenny with the man advantage is going to be leading the way here. Zipmix trying to hold under a little bit of a clever angle, actually. And he's going to get spotted. Gig is up. There's the flash trying to stop him, and he's going to find a kill. Takes down Hunter. Sets himself up for another one here, possibly. No, Nico takes his head off, and that's the 30 bomb. It is Dupree back here. <laughs> Not going to be able to stop Dude. him. He's just running into the bomb site and getting headshots. No scope not connecting from Kenny. The bomb is in the middle. What an unfortunate accident. That is, that's a key part of the ingredient, isn't it, Sam? You, need, you do need that bomb. 40 seconds. They're going to be charging in. Device will take one down. Oh, G2. They would have been in such a winnable position here. Nico's going to get one, but he's still up against Device, who's out on the other side. And Device will get the headshot. That helps out quite a bit. Such a close round. I think with the bomb plant, they probably have that one, too. 32 kills on Nico. So wild, though, wasn't it? I mean, that's a position where you're holding your breath because you think Nico can do it. I... The flash that sip through there, you notice he doesn't turn around for it. It's somehow, like, it's obscured by the scaffolding so that he hasn't, doesn't have to turn. That's a very interesting advantage. I mean, the timing is hard to get, I'm sure, but that looked really cool. He's probably put a little bit of work into that one, getting that, uh, yeah. that dialed in. Absolute nerd, isn't he? <laughs> Dude, devil's in the details, right? You gotta be aware of all details. I don't think you win as many tournaments as the Strahls have and not be putting in that little fine work, right? Yeah, lost a little bit. Uh, it's 14 to 6, G2. Still two rounds off of a first map win in the series. And well, it's a full buy on both sides. A little bit more than patient approach this time from G2, taking their time to clear out Catwalk. We'll want to delay anything, uh, any quick rotations coming over from Astralis towards a B if this turns into a B split. Yes. Still a minute here. And they're holding it for a long time, G2. They, they want to make absolutely sure that Astralis are not pushing really anywhere on the map. Could, I mean, yeah, it still feels more like a B-split, doesn't it? Nico charging out, making some noise, but the rest are down middle. Yeah, this is going to be a B-split. Let's see if Astralis can hold it. They don't have anyone in middle, so it's going to be up to the two B defenders to do anything. And that pretty much means, you know, doing it flawlessly. They even snipe away a uh, device there. Almost with a kill. Could have been maybe there on Glaive. He's going to go down anyway, and that's the B-bomb site. Down to one man, and it's Sip with 25 seconds. He's going to spray one. Kenny's out there as well. 20 seconds, and he's just going to charge him with a clock. That's a good idea, but Sip will stand tall, and it's a triple for him. Very important round. Is this where we see the revival of Astralis? Because they no longer have to execute on the T side. They don't no longer have to have, you know, strats. And the strats that they were throwing towards the end there looked pretty paper, you know, cut and dried. Yeah. Uh, kind of um, easy to read for G2. But now they're on the CT side. Now it's they just get to sit and tur it up and wait for G2 to come to them. Is this where, it, I mean, dude, it is Astralis. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm not seeing it. Really. You're not seeing it? No. Not yet? Is it not even just peeking over the horizon, maybe? No, because I, th I think G2 are so close to winning all these rounds. I th I just... Th this was so well thought out, right? Device goes down to, to Nico over at the catwalk, and and they execute a piece play where no one is in the middle. I mean, I would say nine times out of ten, you just win that round immediately. So I think th I think Astralis is just only barely holding on to this at all. I really think it's... Uh, it's tricky. The Astralis fans, though, are, are amazing. One of them had green screened himself out, so there was just the Astralis logo. Yeah. That's interesting. 
the ultimate goal of all Astralis Ultras. You just become the Lord. <laughs> become, become Astralis. There will only be Astralis, Anders. Well, you're gonna have to convince G2 of that for for the minute. I don't think they quite agree. Three could have been run down. That is scary. Only armor on Amanek though with the Tech Nine, so should be okay. Astralis should be winning this one without too many casualties. So oh. Why is it that with Nico and a Deagle, I still think that I'll hit that headshot on Zip? You know, as Zip oh, challenges yeah. through the doors. Oh. I'm just sitting there like, don't challenge him. Don't do it. Nico can definitely bop you. All right. 14 to 8. I'm just not even close to convinced that Astralis can do this. Is it not eight even rounds? close. Another eight rounds, Anders? Really? Yeah, I mean, I think if you just look at the numbers, yeah, you know, could be done. Um, and my VR couldn't put them away yesterday. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm going to need to see a lot more things out of Astralis. Just a lot more things. Well, they started 3-3-3, three, three, and three. Zip is now up to 10, Glaive is at 8, and Dupree at 8. So we're, we're starting to get them waking up a bit here. The amount of people that they've had alive in the in the last four rounds that they won here. Yeah. It's good that they've won four in a row, but... Getting progressively better. It's, uh, I like how I'm making the case for Astralis, right? Like, I, come on, you're gonna believe this, Anders. <laughs> I, I don't mind. You could be right. Like, you hop on this train. Listen, I'm. When it's time, I definitely will. I'll buy that ticket and I, you know, yeah, like, I'll, I'll go for it. You're but... Danish too. You get a discount. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's probably true. But still, <laughs> right now I'm, I'm swept up in in just enjoying these two playing the game. So. Some great grenades, you know, again, uh, taking the Hunter down very low, Nico dropping low. Looks like a, a long t and, and catwalk split onto the A-bomb side. Mm. Astralis have a decent kind of a defense here, but it uh, but very often in these kind of fights here, it very much depends who goes down first. So if they, if you lose one on A or one in, in long, on long from Astralis' point of view, if, if one of those players go down, it can get really awkward because then you have to make up your mind quickly about where you want to defend. You can't be defending both positions suddenly anymore. Glaive hiding inside of the smoke, and this is very clever. It doesn't seem like they've really thought about it either. Haven't checked for it, so if he gets a double kill here, that's the end of the round, and Hunter was already low, so perfect play coming out from Glaive. And now they, well, they're still challenging, and I guess they'll be fine now. It's a one versus four, but probably not even all that necessary. Next, they're going to be charging in, trying to do some more damage, and he won't be able to do it. So that was a that was a smart play from Glaive, and overall, Astralis were well set up for exactly that kind of an attack from G2. And... If we should, you know, give any kind of criticism to G2, as far as I can tell, they weren't doing anything to to convince Astralis that it that it wasn't going to be that kind of a setup, right? There was not much noise middle or B or anything, mm. right? So Astralis probably felt pretty pretty safe, keeping everyone over on that side. Glaive is looking dialed in as well, probably hitting into it. He's We've been be. made aware that uh, by device in a recent interview that uh, Magus is still calling. A lot of the shots, like 70, 80 percent of the time, is being calling with Glaive helping out. But I mean, if Glaive gets a bit more comfortable, <laughs> could see him just making all the difference here. It's a three-on-three -three scenario, though. Smoke gonna go down. Bomb is on the B site, and G2. This is an eco round. This is still setting it up. One for one trade. Now Glaive able to take the fight, but that is brutal, and this is really gonna put uh, Astralis in a very tough situation now. One v two retake for device. Walking around with his knife out, just to say, I know you're not going to be here any longer. It's pretty bold. He's actually gone the whole way. I can't believe it. Why has he not got the rifle out? <laughs> what is he doing? The timing, though. Yeah, there it finally is. But I don't think they're going to guess he, that he's here already. So let's just see. He's going to have to scope. And that'll give it away. There's one. But right in front of him, Hunter's ready and waiting. And the no scope, not connecting. It'll be the grenade and the shot to follow it up. And that's 15 for G2. And it's just based off of a B rush that completely works. Can't walk. <laughs> You're going to have to, Sam. That's what we're getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> that just went right over his shoulder. Oh, so close. I did. It was, it was almost there. But that wasn't obviously the problem. The problem was going down to that B rush, right? Like not having the, quite the right grenades, not quite, having quite the right protocol. They want to do it again. I love this. Some real attitude coming out from G2 to say, you know what? Let's just see if you learned from last time. And if not, 
then you're going to lose in a painful way. It seems like they have very good counter coming out here. Dupree swinging for the fight. He sees Kenny, and that is how you shut it down. Nice triple from Dupree. Nico in the middle here. Tag in at the very least, but Glade will take him down. 10 to 15. Just slapping. And there is the double AWP save. Who takes that second op? Do you give it to Dupree? Who's going to have that one? It's, the, you know, they've, they've got it all. Yeah, Dupree's going to go ahead and pick up that second AWP. There's an AK in play as well. They can get handed over to Magus. And the device obviously going to take an off of his own. And, well, G2, they are going to have enough money to squeak a buy here. In the 26th round. Map point, and Kenny gets his head taken off by Dupree in mid. Wow. What a shot. Oh, man. Where was that? That was brutal. It's so even across this. It's so funny. Everybody's sitting around 16, 18 kills, and then you just got uh, Nico uh, 35. Yeah. Well, all the eco frags. <laughs> it is outrageous. Give him all the eco frags. Well, listen, um, you're not going to get. You need five more rounds here on the Estrada side. You're not going to get many rounds that start like this one, where Dupree will just snipe away Kenny in the middle. So enjoy it while it lasts, because I mean, these are the rounds again. You have to win. You giving yourself such a gift at the beginning. Not do not throw it away. Basically, flash out there. Not going to slow anyone down. Meg is getting tagged in return. And look, the vice is so alone out here. He's actually in a lot of trouble. He could get shot from the catwalk just in time. A little bit of help from Glaive on that UMP, but. That's not going to help with the flames here. That doesn't even put out everything. And he burns alive. Device, I think, was there two Molotovs? Or did he only put on half of it? I don't know what's going on here. Glaive goes down to Hunter. And just like that, it's looking like it's just meant to be here for G2. Perfect time for that long push. And they absolutely catch them out. Two versus three, 30 seconds, and the bomb is going to be going down. Nice attempt from Dupree. That's not a bad try at all. Sip nearly lining up for a double there, but it's not going to matter. 15 health left in a one versus two, and I don't know how he's possibly going to get in here and go for this retake. It's just going to be so hard to get. Oh, no! Absolutely impossible! They gave him almost nothing at all to work with, and he just destroyed their whole world. What a shot on Nico. There are I, I'm gonna enjoy watching this replay. Hold on. Let's just let's just go ahead and get ready here. There's, there's only gonna be very few people in the world that can do this. Just only very, very few. Man. Sometimes it's gotta happen, Anders. Sometimes it's just gotta happen. He knew where both of them were. And with that AK, man, what a shot on Amanek. Clay can't even believe it. Nicely done. That has going. That is certainly going to be frustrating for G2. No, they know that they had that round of the bag. Yeah, they really did. I... And well, I mean, and, you know, even the game was on G2 side there, Anders. Yeah. That smoke not canceling out the Molly on device. What is that? Yeah. What are these shenanigans? Listen, it's. <laughs> there was a lot going on in that round for sure. And that is definitely a G2 round. Because the device stays alive there, he holds that line on long. You got to deal with him at some point. You're not getting up onto that bomb site. Totally different scenario. Still, I'm, I, this is everything we hoped for here for this match. Fantastic stuff. Astralis, one round closer. 15 to 11, G2 on map point on that T side. But it's a buy round for both teams now. Double AWP still in play here for Astralis as well. Well, G2, they've gone away from the B rush. <laughs> they've gone around f away from the A. So now it's just kind of hang around and uh, post up in mid here and hope that somebody peeks. See what hap what's happening for a minute, yeah. But again, just remember that last round, right? They got the kill on on Kenny and everything else. And they, I mean, that long defense wasn't really. There was nothing really there for for Astralis. So, even though they win the round at the end for, to sip that, I mean, that's an amazing clutch for me. But I would still say, you look at the overall defense. I'm not I'm not that excited. I yeah, they're doing the same thing. I completely understand this from G2's point of view. Thinking everything worked. All we need to do is basically not get uh, clutched by sip. Megas, though, in a better position this time, and he's going to get a kill. That's a big difference from last time. He lines up a big double there. Device is going to be throwing down that grenade, and they step right on it. That's a much better long defense, and that's the kind of thing you want to see. If you want to get your way here and get to overtime, those are the kind of things you need. They will be finding Glaive. That's a nice kill there in CT spawn, and now what's going to happen here? Two on two, Sip and Dupree versus Hunter and Amanek. Oh, not wasting time. They're going to take the fight to him. Do not let you two get comfortable, but Hunter's gonna take full advantage. Instead, it's Emmerich actually finding the headshot on Zipnix. 
And once again, Dupree, 1v2, can he clutch it? Full flash, and it's just not meant to be. Hunter wow. shuts him down, 16 to 